Good morning. It's Tuesday, November 12, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Old Words That Are New. And our scripture is 2 John. How happy I was to meet some of your children and find them living according to the truth, just as the Father commanded. I'm writing to remind you, dear friends, that we should love one another. This is not a new commandment, but one we have had from the beginning. Love means doing what God has commanded us, and He has commanded us to love one another, just as you heard from the beginning. Of the truths I've learned in the last four decades, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ is one central reality that sounds oxymoronic. It goes something like this. In proclaiming God's message, nothing you say will be new. In proclaiming God's message, everything you say is new. Now while that sounds contradictory, everything is in the details. They are both true statements and complement each other. Let's unpack that. First of all, nothing you say will be new. The gospel of Jesus is decidedly simple to grasp, as it's the story of the good news that humanity was in bondage to our slavish addiction to sin. Jesus came to be with us in Bethlehem, lived a sinless life to die in our place, atoning for everyone's sins. But death could not hold Jesus in the grave, as Easter morning attests. He ascended to heaven to be reunited with his Father, and he's coming again to judge the living and the dead. This is the gospel. He came, he loved, he died, he's risen, and he's coming again. It's the old, old story. And when you proclaim it, no matter how eloquently or differently than your peers or the previous generation or the next generation, it will be that same story. Methods and modes may change. The gospel is immutable. And now for the other side of the argument. Everything you say will be new. This second statement is a little more intricate. With each occurrence of the spoken word, there's a new experience of that which is spoken for both the hearer and the speaker. A wise teacher I had once told me the word of God is inspired three times. It was inspired, first of all, by God when written, according to 2 Timothy 3.16, as well as a personal inspiration for the speaker, And then thirdly, a soul-searching inspiration for those who hear. We might add a fourth to say that God's Holy Spirit is active in the work accomplished with the Word. Hebrews chapter 4. For the Word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. In a simple analogy, we say you can never step in the same stream twice. As the water moves, it's always a new place in which you walk. In the same way, God's Word is always cutting edge and never old news. When God's Word is brought to bear on the oldest of problems, or that which seems to be new, things happen. For you today... Whether a preacher in the context of a worship service or simply a friend sharing the good news with another friend, strap on your seatbelt, put your tray tables in the upward position, and get ready for the ride. His old words are new every day. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.